Everybody read the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, any comments on them? Any motions? Not approved. Second. All in favor? Uh, all the business done. New business. Richard, you want to tell us about the Starwood Saloon? Yeah, what we've got here, um, if you want to change the order of the agenda, since they're not here yet, and, okay. you know, just cross our fingers and hope, give them five more minutes, and uh, and we know Ollie's not here yet, but um, we've got a representative. Um, George Kimberly from the Mountain Conservation Trust is here, and um, appreciate him being here early. So, um, I mean, if you want to, if you're okay with kind of skipping down and, and knocking him out first. Okay, well, let's do the Mountain con conversation, Conservation to get this right, man. And that'll give out his time to get here, maybe. Yeah, if you don't mind, Mr. Kimberly, sure. can you kind of tell him? what this event is? Sure. Uh, this is uh, our annual members meeting that's also open to the general public. And uh, it'll be October the 20th at um, newly acquired property for the trust that uh, has already been open to the public um, by appointments for special events, but eventually we hope to open it up as a more or less as a park for the public. <clears throat> so we're going to hold it out there this year for the first time. And we expect, uh, we usually have between 100 Around 100 people, we'd like to have maybe 150 this year uh, to introduce people to the to the new place, um, and we would serve beer and wine. Where's the location? At? It's in Talking Rock, off of Highway 136 West, um, just past the Chastain Bridge. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, yeah. the park mm -hmm. up there. Yeah. What date is the 20? Is it? It's not on a Sunday, is it? It's a Saturday. Okay. I mean, that's up. Yeah. Other than it's we have a stipulation about Sundays, right? So. We always pick the open Saturday when George is not playing football. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of people have asked me what creek or creeks run through the property. Yeah, uh, it's got frontage on Talking Rock Creek and Wildcat Creek. And not to be confused with the mountain bike park that opened in Talking Rock, that's a different land trust. That's not, not us. Uh, that's a land trust in Atlanta, but it's, as the crow flies, it's about a mile, mile apart. Right. Any discussion? Um, what about licensing for something like that? Is there the intention of the special event license is to allow, on a very limited basis, uh, maximum three times a year for non-alcohol license holders to be able to get these special event permits, um, never on Sunday. And if you know they give us the information ahead of time, and their you know their paperwork is in order, um, everything meets the standards per the county code of ordinances. Okay. Traffic shouldn't be a problem up there. At all. We uh, it shouldn't be. We have you know road, uh, gravel road leading in, but we'll have uh, parking docents out to direct traffic, and then we have a cleared pasture that we're using for the parking. Any more questions? And yeah, we do have food. <laughs> I don't know if that's important, but we do. Yeah, it's catered. Motion to approve. Got a motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? We're ready to go. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Richard. You need yeah. to stay here. No, um, so we'll send you uh, an approval letter or something like that. Thank you. Let me just look one more time, make sure. Ali or somebody else. Thank you, George. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Hensley, you want to do the uh, full uh, alcohol license change for Ali? Okay. So this gas station already has a county alcohol license and whenever whether it's a restaurant or gas station or otherwise 
somebody wants to keep an existing license through the end of the year in terms of just payment of fees, but uh, change a person, it's a formal new alcohol license. Even though, um, you know, we don't double charge them. In other words, if somebody's already got an active alcohol license, um, you know, we, we, and in this case they do. So um, as a formal change, it comes before the beer and wine board and there's been four weeks of newspaper advertising and Ali has had a um, fingerprinting background search which uh, did not come up with any in the last two years convictions for criminal related or alcohol related offenses and um, as far as I know all the paperwork is in order um, it is okay uh, it's just a manager change is that ownership started to sign so the responsible person now becomes Ali so it's really like you know Ali becomes the the point man um, so you know that's who we go to if there was a worst case scenario um, and I didn't know like it was like a corporation where ownership stayed the same with a manager running it or something as what it was in Kareem Sarani mm -hmm. and now Ali changed it to Ali not Kareem okay but does he but Ali, Kareem still owns the business no Ali what purchased the business yeah, from as him? far as I know yes okay it's all his the um, lottery you know has already been changed into his name everything it is so the of ownership is what i was asking the location okay. does still have an alcohol license yes but it has changed it's ownership yeah so so the the entire process has been correctly followed in terms of a new alcohol license the only question um, that, that as a board, you know, y'all can determine one way or the other is whether or not y'all want for the period of August 7 to December 30th, 31st, 2018, if, um, if y'all determined that 850 South Main LLC responsible person, Ollie Knockby, needs to pay for a, the fees for a new alcohol license, then um, then he will um, he he will need to if y'all determine so. Um, you know that. I don't think we've done that in the past though. No, I mean it, it, it would be kind of a change. Ownership would always change. charge them. Oh really? Yes. Yeah. Any, anytime ownership changes, you to get a new license if you change the ownership. Uh, the only time we can waiver that just about it is if it's family death or something and it changes because of that, and then it's a uh, okay. iffy to what we do or not. You know what I mean? Okay. But if it changes ownership, you always because it's now as far as I know, it has. Well, you know, of course, that's yeah. something we need to know. If it has yeah. changed ownership, we've always because it's be like me going over and buying it and okay. using his license for the remainder of the year, so, and it's pro, not prorated, so it's one of those you pay for the full year license, but you have to renew January first or December. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't understand that Ali had purchased it. I thought Kareem still owned it. Well, like I say, now, I know that the Georgia Lottery has been changed into Ali's name. And there is a new business license, I think, that has been put up that's in his name. And then there was a certificate of where he has been to school, and it's in his name. Everything's put up on where you can see it when you mm -hmm. come in. That's the only question, is it? If it's okay. still under... The other's name, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I mean, as an owner, that's what we got into last year. He said he was old enough to buy it till he first of the year when they renewed, right? But because it didn't change ownerships until then, supposedly. But this time, if it's changed ownerships, yeah, if he's done got it in his name, he's gonna they not supposed to be a selling beer now. Until they get it all, until they get it in his name. If he's done that business, put in his name. Well, Nick, they're bootleg. Uh -oh. <laughs> no, that's it. Okay, so, but um, you know, the good thing is, um, again, all the paperwork's in order, fingerprinting checks out, 
So um, we'll move forward if y'all vote to approve this as a brand new license fully, including fees. He's, he's got licenses now, hasn't he? Okay. So I don't mean that. And they've been one there for years. So yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's something that we can that work with. No it's still deal. low because if it's changed ownership, so you do have we, to have a new license. Do we prorate? We do not prorate. Mm -hmm. We've never, I mean, that's one of those. Somebody last year, Sourwood last year, the night before, he didn't that's get right. open until November, and he was him coming in and pleading with us but because we told him ahead of time, you know, it's cost you to, to if you're going to serve before now in January. Okay. Yeah, he'll have to, he'll have to apply for a license and like say. I think he's got all that. Everything's there. Everything there. Yeah. He's, already, he's, already, he's already ran a legal ad. And it's run the first, I think it has run the first week already in the paper. I've seen it two weeks, I think, or three in the paper already. For the BP? No, no. I've, the Chevron. I've, yeah. Okay, so yeah. he's getting the BP also. I went by me, don't look like they got shut down. They had empty shells in there and everything else. I didn't even stop. Didn't Just wait. Well, <laughs> E.B. Brown, me and E.B. Brown will be there at seven o'clock. He's got a church right next door. I don't know that he can. His grandfather and the church come out to business. If it's a change in ownership, so that's the city's business. Yeah, you know what I mean? But it's one of those. And look at it way. Be up to them, really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It depends on who argues that it's uh, the loudest, but uh, I because the business was already there established, it'd be hard to. I don't see no problem with this, except we've always, when they change ownership, they got to get a license, a new license in their name. So that's the only thing about it. Motion second. I make a motion that we approve it with the understanding that uh, there will be a full amount paid for licensing for an entire year. No, for the remainder of the year. Right, for the entire year. And then a new license would have to be issued for January. Got a motion here, sir. Sir. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor? And I hope I hadn't put my foot in my in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, ma'am. We'll send you uh, or Ali probably. We'll send well, Ali an approval letter. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, wait just a minute now. I'll have to give these licks. <laughs> Can't just jump up and run off. <laughs> oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. Sirwood honey still in here. Now, um, we've been in recent communication about a variety of matters with um, with Sourwood and Honey Dip Saloon. Their main point of contact now, who we're working with, uh, Rick Stack, he is interested in doing some of what Foothills IGA does in the sense that. Um, Y'all are all aware that our alcohol licenses are either or. Either you serve and pour, or you sell. And if you sell, then people can take it away and you know, do whatever legitimately they want to with it. Um, in this case, you've got a restaurant with consumption on the premises only. And they want a special event to have wine tasting and if somebody really enjoys the taste of one of the wines, they want to give folks the opportunity to buy the wines, um, you know, and, and leave with a full bottle of wine. Would it be in a separate room or would it be in, like at the bar? I can understand <coughs> in a room adjoining or, you know what I mean, but by being in the same, you know, we're not even the room at the table. There the yards, all the tasting set up. It says it's in, inside the restaurant. Fourth Creek Shopping Center, inside the restaurant. 
because it's kind of one long, big, open place for the most part, if I remember right. I didn't know, but what you know, one minute you put it on that corner over there and had it sort of separated. Might be more legal than putting it condition? together. You know what I mean? I mean, so yeah. I'm, I don't know where legally you could put them both in the same one. Well, what do you? I mean, you know, it really. Cobb getting that in there, you can't sell beer and wine in the same place. You, you can't have liquor in the same place. You have to have two separate rooms. They, they can be in the same building, but it's got to be a door more door or less two separate business. business. Is his license by the drink? He can't sell by the package or the bottle. Right. It, it, it is his the, license by the drink? Right. Yes. Right. Now, like IGA, they can sample because it's under the wine retasting. They can sample, but they can't they, sell it. Well, they it. sell the wine in the store, but he's got a separate little section. But he has a retail license there. That's what yeah. I say, but it's for bottles. Right. So, what, right. so what so IGA, therefore, of course, yeah, you know, their IGA has asked for and been approved, although, of course, they're a totally separate business. And, and you know, just because one does not necessarily mean the other. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, IGA, we know, has a um, retail license. And then they've also asked for special events to have Which is a taste wine taste. tastings so that they can serve it. They can have consumption on the premises for a very limited time. And um, I think this is kind of a reverse. separate section from the wine section in the store or something. But how could he sell bottles of wine? Because he's got because he don't have a retail license. Yeah, he if, has packaging. If y'all approve yeah. a special event for like you know, in this case, one day, um, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. You, the, the wine tasting in the state of Georgia has to where you have to if you've got a tasting room or whatever, you can sell on the site. But you got That's, it's under the wine tasting, tasting right. section. Okay. Fine and good, same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I say, you can, it, because it's under a wine tasting, it's got the exception to it. I think what Joe was saying is that Sour Sourwood does not have a retail license. That's the only thing. I mean, you know, they can't sell wine by the bottle because they don't have a retail license. Well, yes, and I, I understand all those points. And, you know, I mean, because, you know, y'all, I appreciate y'all helping me and others put this option together through the county code of ordinances, this special event option. You know, this, if on an individual case-by-case -case basis, the Beer and Wine Board chooses to approve uh, an individual case, whether somebody has a, a license or no license, like in the case of Mountain Conservation Trust, um, you know, as a special event, a special if the board event. approves it, they can do something, whether it's because pour and serve on the premises or sell something for you know somebody to take away because of the special events and it comes under a different category it might cover what you're talking about joe where if they can come in you know what i mean yeah i mean because it's under a, there's two sets of rules one for uh, tasting and the special events and then you've got the one for pouring right so therefore i mean the way time wine tasting and all that is under a whole different headlines under state re uh, regulation. I did have a copy of a bunch of them to work. They're exempt from some of the other rules. But I I'm not sure that you can have it in the same, like at the bar, just go up and I'll pour you a drink of wine. If you want one, we'll get you a bottle. I mean, you know, I'm not, I don't understand, I don't know, I'm not a lawyer on that. But it's one of those that, if you ain't careful, you'll get into it to where you're not legal because you've refused because, like I say, they're having them here, you can't have them here, and it's under a special event. Right, and if, if there's a question, then then that could be, I understand, justification for um, either tabling or denial. If there's a question legally, being that our county attorney's not here, about if this is even possible, there's no local you know, section of our county code of ordinances that would prohibit this, prohibit somebody where they have an alcohol license or not from having a special event and having wine tasting in which somebody, if they're so inclined, could buy a bottle. Um, but if there's, if there really is a state prohibition on that, then it's my understanding that locally 
we can strengthen state regulations, but we cannot relax them. Um, you know, in the sense that the state says you got to be 300 feet from a, a church or school, and and locally, Pickens County decided in the county code of ordinances to double that to strengthen those regulations. But we couldn't relax them and say, oh, you can just be 100 feet. You know, we, we couldn't do that. So that, I mean, if that's I mean, a question mark up in there, well, I'm saying that, that, I'm then, saying that right. they, legally, if they can have them both in the same bar or whatever, or okay. restaurant, then it's legally state because, I mean, like I said, the tasting is buying and sampling wine on the spot. Okay. So or the special want, event. When do you want to do this? It's September the 10th. Well, we got that. time. Can we go back to the uh, county attorney and just ask him to clarify? The state law in that regard? Is it a Monday? What we could do, if, given that there are questions, if y'all want to table this tomorrow, Linda and I can get with the county attorney and ask him the question. And, um, you know, like with any event, folks need planning ahead time so if it turns out that they need to push this back from September 10th to some other date um, you know if it's possible and if it's not even possible if the answer from the county attorney tomorrow or you know later on this week is you can't even double dip in this fashion then we'll know that that's the only question I've got okay. every day and I'm uh, okay with them having it because it's on a Monday What's the 10th what do you think yeah, I don't want to hurt nobody's business. No, know. and like I say, if the wine tasting or special events you can serve. And then we would know going forward. Now, next time something yeah. comes in, we will want so. to have this discussion again once we get that group right. release, whether it's yeah. we, we need to get it settled and then, like I said, we'll have no problem now. On. No, because I don't want to hurt nobody's business either. You know, man needs to make as much money as he can out there. Not that easy. Yep. All right, we'll table it till you can find out from the attorney. I guess officially, if we can get a motion to table second, something like that. Move that we table it. And those such times we can determine from our county attorney whether that meets state regulations. Okay. Got a second? Second. Okay. All in favor of that? Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Trying to look it up. Moving on. D, reporting dates and compliance. Um, just would like for y'all to give it some thought as far as if you have any ideas. Um, having some issues with a couple of license holders um, as far as the reporting and being in compliance. Um, do we want to, Richard and I talked about a little bit today, do we want to maybe, uh, if they're late, you know, more, more than five days late. Give them a warning letter and then, then a $250 fine and a $500 fine and suspension, that type thing. If, if we can just put our heads together as far as a, some sort of program that I can throw out there at them to maybe, you know, give them a little bit of incentive it was to. Written letter and a $1,000 fine. I thought it was. Yeah, that's what we, in this. Always done. We did this. Well, that's that's the minimum. minimum. We have to change we, the rules. We did go through and drop one and put on probation for a year. 500 last year was so but i think it's written in there that there's a yeah i understand that things happen and, and yeah but if you give them a letter that should bring it, it, attention if you already if you already sent them a letter recently um i sent two and i've got my reports after i sent the letters and emails so um so when you send those do you do it um certified Return? i have not had to, have to do that yet, so but I would if it, if it came down to that. Are they late every quarter? No, no there's a, well, there's a not every quarter, but there's a couple that you know I kind of have to nudge a little bit. But, and it's it's well, I don't want to talk about it. Well, it can be, and it, it, it kind of it, because I don't deal with beer and wine board issues every day, it kind of you know, it can. It can get over my head too sometimes. I think, oh my gosh, it's the 10th. 
or it's the 20th. And, uh, I think in the past what we've been doing, and correct me if I'm wrong, but once they're 10 days late, and the letter goes out, certified letter, stating to them they're late, and they have another 10 days to, to comply. To normally, comply, normally it's a thousand dollar fine termination or life suspension. Normally it's after the quarterly meeting. If they're late by then, which is usually sort of be the tenth or so when they're in, and okay. so a week or two after that or whenever, then bring it before us. It would tell you to send a certified letter. And then from that, it goes to probation with a fine following if they don't come in like for a year. Okay. We have okay. limited those fines. Mm -hmm. Okay. And like I said, I just want to get your thoughts on that. But a thousand dollar fine is a lot to come up with sometimes. For, sure it is. And like I said, they'll get their attention if they know it's coming. And mm -hmm. then it's hard to argue if you've got a registered letter. Well, when you're habitual. And you know what I mean. Yes, and exactly. normally, used to we'd give a verbal warning, I think, and then a written letter, and then fine. Well, I know yeah. that's a long time, but still, if they're habitual with it, it's going to be. Well, had a good bit of problems with this when we first started this and I think one time we fined 10 pieces people thousand dollars a piece we got their attention yeah they had a man after that for a good while it straightened up pretty well okay but if you let them go over they'll just get more back mm -hmm. every time and First thing you know, you're not even getting a report. Actually, they're supposed to be in within what ten days from the ten days end of the about the ten the date of the letter. Well, they're and supposed to be in ten days after the first of the month. Right. The only confusion among that was where the excise taxes every ninety days, isn't it? And I know it's monthly. I'm talking about on the liquor tax was 90 days and the other was 30 days at one time we had some confusion on that yeah. and the beer was coming in and they thought well I thought it was quarterly mm -hmm. you know what I mean yeah. like you can under sort of understand that and work with it but like I said the, I think the um, alcohol tax on the form is quarterly in it the, the excise tax mostly. excise tax is monthly Okay, it's a beer tax. Beer's on quarterly. Okay, yeah. the beer's quarterly. But I had vice versa. But anyway, I mean, and it can be confusing to somebody that, especially if you've got both. Oh, sure. Yep. Uh, okay. And I've, um, for the reports, uh, I've got your exercise and I've got the first and, and your second quarter. But what I did was I just took um, figures from the first two quarters of last year and this year. I just kind of did a little comparison chart as far as food and alcohol. But, but, uh, alcohol sales don't slow down much. No. <laughs> some of Faz Corners, is that all 
long you got retail businesses at? Those are the three gas stations, the Kent's old store, and then. And is this beer sales or? It's beer and wine retail. Yeah. Okay. I reckon he's trying to buy all these stores. I mean, well, like I'm not sure he's not still owning them with just a new manager. They put it in their name and all, but he still owns the business and getting all the profit. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's what I'm not sure Gail knew what she was talking about there. I, I don't know that it really matters, but Cherokee County, they don't allow them to have the two businesses. Stories of all one person can have down there. And this will make him five, I think. It gets this one out here. Is the same guy buying it? The same guy that just bought the one down the bars and tape? No, I think John no. Lee bought this one. He started out with Kent's over there and then bought the tape and done fire. But if he sold on fire and then buying this, I don't know. Oh, it's different. The same person owns them all, don't they? Well, she said that's what I was trying to ask. I mean, that's the new guy that's running that one has bought it all, supposedly, at Don Fires. But if it's the same guy that owns them and he's got a different manager, I'm not sure if we're, you know, one may not, and that's worth, because they like the IGA, every time they change manager, they're buying your license. I mean, if it's a man that owns about 10 of them and he's got different managers and then putting them in there and putting it over in their name, it's worth business. It's still, mm -hmm. I mean, that's. There's a gray area well, there. That it's, like. You know, one may, what's yeah. the difference in IGA or. Right. Uh, something like that, or Kroger, something changing managers and changing one of the convenience of if you own several of them. Mm -hmm. This, these stores have always been a mystery to me. You know, well, that Chevron over at Steve Tate Road, you know, when we issued the first license there, rent was $12,500 a month. He paid half the insurance and Parking lot, and I don't know what all that is. No way place. one of them businesses is going to pay rent like that and stay in business. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's the way Don Ford was. They had it down $6,000 rent, and they were paying Don $1,800 a month. Mm -hmm. so, I some you hidden money are going somewhere. Just one announcement that y'all probably all were made aware of that on the November ballot will be you know a special question um, asking all the voters, no matter if you live in the, the county or the city, um, everybody that's a registered voter will be eligible to vote on whether or not they want Sunday afternoon and evening restaurant pouring or serving officially known as consumption on the premises yeah. in the county. Yeah, I see yeah. That. Yeah. The people in the city can vote on it. They've already got it in the city. So. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a little different to me. Um, that yeah, city residents, if they're registered voters, I, I guess it would be an added layer of you know, tougher for the elections staff members to try to weed out, you know, well, you're a registered voter in Arbor Hills versus Riverstone versus wherever, you know, so that probably just easier to say, if you're a registered voter, go vote. You got it. I think you should be for the people, and there you go again. People in the city could care less, probably. I mean, because they've done got it. Yeah, they've got it. Maybe. And the businesses harmful, in the yeah. city probably wouldn't want to see it, so. No, so it's. Uh, these old hard shell Baptists out here, and I'm one of them. They ain't gonna go for it too good, I don't think. They never have. All right, y'all got any more comments or anything? No? We'll adjourn.
Everybody's happy. Very appreciate you coming hey, out. Yeah, if you can uh, come in now that we're adjourned, we still hey, it'll be you? good to ask you kind of questions, get everybody kind of on the same page. Sorry about that, I was stuck in traffic. Oh, no problem. We're trying to figure out for the gas station on South Main. Okay. The business license is now, you know, been changed over from whatever it was to 850 South Main LLC. Yes, sir. And now the alcohol license is going to be um, 850 South Main LLC with you as the responsible person. Okay. Ali, um, not be. Yes, sir. So the question is, this gas station, 850 South Main, mm -hmm. who now owns it? Is it the exact same as it was a year ago, or has there been a change? It's exact same. I was there to, to begin with. Who owns it? But who, who, yeah, who owned it a year ago, and who owns it now? Well, when we started it, it was on Kareem's name. But then I was having a hard time, you know, getting to places and getting things done. So I asked him, I said, and then legally, I own it now. Wait, has there been a change of registration of that property in the courthouse right here that says that you're the legal Well, owner. the property doesn't belong to them anyway. Yeah, the property's not ours. Oh, so it's the business? They, yeah. They rent the property. From, yeah. Okay, so you're just the business name? Yeah. Okay. Because okay. the ownership of the business has changed. But the All lease right. is on my name. Okay. Okay. So you did everything right with the paperwork and the application? Everything. Um, just to let you know, um, and this is this would be for any business, whether it's a restaurant or a gas station. Right. Um, for better or worse, um, the way this works is because you own it right now. Right. Um, you've got a business license. You've got the alcohol license. It was approved tonight, which is okay. great. But there's a fee. Um, so, you know, we we got clarification tonight that, um, and again, this this would be for you or other businesses. So from August 7th, from today to December 31st, you're gonna to have to pay the fee for a, like a years long, you know, a 2018 alcohol license. So that will be whatever it'll be, you know, $2,000 or whatever it is, the exact amount. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of, that's, that's one of those things, you know, that's no, part of it's non -pro right Yeah, that's part of from. getting this in your name. Whole and, year, even if you just open for a month before January, uh, before December is whenever first or whatever you have to reapply. Okay. So, so, I mean, so what I'm saying is, am I going to get prorated up to now? Or? No. No. And no prorating. It's always, if you change business ownership, we had one last year that was supposed to have been open in August or September. He got put back to a, what was it, November? Yeah, November. November. He yeah, so for and six he weeks he cool. paid for a whole year's worth of alcohol license. For six the did, yeah. I mean, it's just um. That's fine. I mean, if this is the procedure, then it is. What is for? There's one to more problem now. Mm -hmm. Until you get your license in your name, you can't sell no more beer or wine. Well, we've, I mean, you know, come in first thing tomorrow morning mm -hmm. and, and Linda will get you that license. So. I mean, we've got, got that have, approved. You've got to have a state but, license to go with it for you and say it. If you got, if you got a state license, well, I know. can't apply for the state license until, until I get the city license. Right, correct. But yeah. legally, you can't yeah. sell beer until you get the license from us and the state in your name. Well, can I ask you one question? That I was always the partner of this store. That. Business is under 744 Jasper LLC. That also belongs to me. So what we actually doing is I'm taking his name out of it on everything and just remaining there. But it's changed but it, ownership. It was in his name to start with. Now right. it's in your yeah. name. So until oh, if oh, yeah. I have his permission or is it okay with you guys to until my state license get here? Can I, like Richard, I talked to Richard, can I use it? A state person would need to... I, don't, I can't buy anything. Yeah, tomorrow ask a state person, because I, I mean, I, I can't, I, I can't speak on behalf of the state. See, I can give you, but tomorrow morning, come in and we'll give you first thing, you know, mm -hmm. your county license. Okay. So you'll have that for sure. Okay, and then the and state then license is to, for me to purchase the alcohol from the companies. See, the city license is, for to sell it in the city of Jasper, and the state license is used. So, either way, I can't purchase anything from the vendors until I get my state license. This is something that 
that that restaurant that was you know a six week you know November and December um, it, they went through kind of the same thing with the state so in that case I was more than happy and I'll be happy with you you know to right. talk directly to a state staff member but they've still they've got to make that determination I mean but I can talk to them if you you know but you'll need to first <clears throat> reach out tomorrow to the state okay and find out whoever you know a good person no, is. No, what I'll do is I'll I can I'm gonna file as soon as I get the city. Yeah. And I'll just it's online filing. Okay. And I'll yeah. send you a I'll forward you a link on that that I have filed and it usually takes about seven to ten business days to get here. Basically they wanna see me get the city license before I get any other license from them. Everything else, the tobacco license has been changed. We've had one or two that walked them through. Okay. The best thing to do is go down there and walk them through. You can usually get them in one day if you do that. Yeah, take yeah. the paperwork take it down there and walk them through. And get but in. until that's done, you can't sell. Okay. I mean, well, you can. But, oh, you don't want to. Yeah, you don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. No. Okay, very good. Oh, so thank the, you. The, the, so the, the city license is. I can't. County license. County license. Yeah. No, no, I get confused. <laughs> the county license, I, I, with he, having that, I still can't sell it. Not if they come in from the state. But you know what? They, they ask us to get the state license too. You have to have the city, I mean, county license to get to the state license, but you have to have both before you can right. sell it. The state license is used to purchase alcohol from vendors, and the county license. This is on the classes they give, they give us. When we go to the Georgia Department of Revenue, they say there's two licenses. And the county license is to sell. So. And then the state, I won't be able to get it anyway. But, you know, that's only for me to purchase the alcohol from uh, the beer and wine from the companies. We'll See? Just, yeah, just come in first thing tomorrow morning mm -hmm. and we'll talk about it. And we can get on the phone with the state if we need to. Right. We'll, we'll get it figured out. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you.